Good afternoon, everybody. My name is, uh, I guess you can call me Dr. Nemeka Weke. It's a pleasure to, at this moment, um, in this current, be able to answer as by a doctor, um, but the journey to medicine has not been that easy. Um, but that's what medicine is about, it's a journey. Like I desired to optimize myself. I knew I was intelligent. I had many capabilities. Growing up, I played football, basketball, and track. My initial aspiration was to play uh, football or basketball. Um, but when I took that detour, I started focusing more on my academics. Um, being someone from Nigeria, I had parents who were more advocates for academics and less of athletics and things like that. So that was a disparity that I faced, um, but I was also wise enough at that age to understand that, you know, you know academics and things of the mind will, will forever take me places, you know, and sports is, could be something that with an injury or two ends, you know, things like that. So but I never used to think of it that way. I just made the right, made a decision that has brought me to where I am today. Um, my pathway to medicine definitely has, was rough. Um, it still is rough, um, but that's the thing about it is that, that everything that needs molding has rough edges and you just have to scope through and that's the process. In undergrad, when I made my transition from pre-pharmacy to saying, you know what, I'm just gonna go all the way and focus on pre-med and medicine. Um, it was an easy transition for me because I knew that I wanted to gain more. I went to University of Houston with the, with the initial intent for pharmacy, right? And as I was taking organic chemistry in one and two, I started seeing how I was doing very well, you know, and my focus was increasing. I was seeing how deep I could read and things like that. Um, it took one incident in the chem lab where we were mixing acid and base, the titration lab, where um, this lady was like, oh, you have steady hands. And in the back of my mind, at home, I've always been called surgeon. I had this lady, this auntie, she would come to my house and she'd say, surgeon, she would always say that and you know for me I like being called you know being addressed in, in such a way as a physician in the future but for me the question was do I want to study for that long but once I started to get in tune with the process of reading and you know my study habits starts to get better I was like you know let me challenge myself every every step of the way I was trying to challenge myself the more so then I changed my degree to biology and I started to go forward in that process. Um, when it came to the time of understanding how to get into medical school, taking an MCAT, um, letters of recommendation, shadowing, clinic, you know, getting these hours, doing things that everybody knew. Me, see the problem was I did not have that knowledge. No, I had a, I have an older brother who went to medical schools, currently a grad, has graduated from family medicine residency. But even at that time, he was the first person. Um, he went to Ross University. He, I didn't feel like uh, he he was only he was only a, a, a gaining tools, you know, and trying to understand his journey. So I still was removed from having like somebody condition me in that process. But knowing that he's going through it, I was I would always ask a question. So I was on a territory of figuring out myself how to do it. So I learned about the MCAT exam, um, learned about it, you know, quite late in, you know, the end of my junior year um, and began to try to study for it. Um, I studied for the exam, you know, I ended up taking the exam four times, four times and um, it was very, very discouraging. Um, first time I took it wasn't terrible, you know, I knew how much I did not put in the effort and distraction that I had. I scored, you know, um, a 21 back then, you know, I think the highest was like a 35 or something like that or in that range, but now the exam is, is different. I scored a 21. And, you know, there was a, there was a parallel with the three, three sections where it was all it was all on even plane. So I was like, you know what, that's not terrible, 
right? They would like that you score evenly on each session. So I was like, you know, if I put in a little bit more effort, I will definitely do better. If I can get 10, 10, 10s, then I, I'll, be, I'll be in good shape, you know, things like that. I was seeing these uh, results on my practice exams, and I was very feeling very confident. Unfortunately, I just started taking a backwards step. Next time I took it, I scored a 13. I scored a 14. I scored a 17. Um, I didn't quite understand why the verbal reasoning was such a, a issue. Um, I was I knew that it wasn't the strongest, but I legitimately scored, and no one ever I, no one ever scores this. I scored a one on the verbal reasoning. Which made me start scratching my head, like, what did I even do on that session? Did I not read? I know I read it, you know. So I definitely I went into a depressive state with that period, you know, just making yourself feel like inadequate, you know, like, what am I doing? You know, you feel like you're hearing things now, you know, your surroundings, like people are seeing you as a failure and stuff like that. It may not be true, you know. Um, you know, I felt suffocated at some point in my household with that, but I knew how to keep myself going. Um, I tapped into my faith, you know, knew that it's going to take a lot of prayers to figure this thing out. Um, if I need to condition it, I would go to the library to pick up books, to challenge myself. I'm not an avid reader, but I go and pick up motivational books. It was at that time period that, you know, I started to tap into my motivational spirit because it started to turn in me that I needed something to keep, to, to make me feel confident again to do this process again. Because studying for the MCAT, you know, you need a good six to eight weeks and even more. And it drains you because you have to tell people, oh, I, I'm not, you know, um, going to be available, denying yourself of certain things. And it, it's just, it's tough, you know. So I applied two cycles, um, spent a lot of money, never got any interviews, two cycles. And then it came about again, I said, you know what, I'm going to make some life adjustments. And I'm going to try this again. My mom told me, son, try this again. My dad was telling me, try this again. So seeing that I have family support, the people that were pumping money to allow me to even give this thing a shot. Um, and you find a lot of people who don't have financial opportunities to even make a tent. And finance, finances it will be the limitation. But I would say I was blessed with people that gave me push in a financial way added to my personal dedication to try to get to this. And then I told myself, you know, I would never restrict myself. So the fifth time I tried, I began to uh, study for it. And then simultaneously, I said, you know, I'm going to apply to Caribbean schools. And initially, because of sets, you know, people, statements about Caribbean schools, you know, and things like that, I said, no, listen, I got to do what I need to do to find my joy, you know. So I applied to Caribbean school, um, three of them at that, Ross, St. George's, and this other school, St. Kitts. And then at the same time, my dad told me, he said, listen, be steady for the fifth time because you may forgo going out there if they gave you opportunity. So I said, you know what? I can't pray and not try out my options. So I was making all my attempts. At that period of beginning to study for it again, I got accepted to St. George's. Um, I didn't. I didn't waste any time. I just said, you know what? I'm ready to go ahead and start pursuing uh, my dreams. And you know, being on the island gave me a lot of experiences. I felt like for me, the journey is about your experience. Your journey is about the location you journey. Medicine is diffused everywhere. Same material, same thing. Right? There may be some clinical limitations with exposure to certain places that don't have certain things. But as far as textbook goes, what you're looking for, you can find. And what you need more of, you can find and go there and get it. Um, that's, just, that's, that's, that's the message right there. Um, I want to talk to those people who are interested in medicine. You, whether you're in high school, college, um, in graduate school right now or changing your career trying to get in medicine. Um, the most important thing is not these exams. Well, these exams are important. Definitely. There's a lot of things that you have to 
you know, pass. But I feel like a lot of people don't have their mindset in check, right? And it's important that you understand what you're gonna face. First of all, who you are, what it is that you want to do, how do you plan to do it? Do you know the cost of what it's going to cost you? Either financially, spiritually, all of that. You need to be preparing yourself because all that goes into your mindset. Once you're able to understand that, there's no amount of work that's going to be in front of you that you cannot complete. You know, there's power manifestation, right? Once you say something and say you want to be something, right? Is you take the first step. When you take the first step, you ask questions. You ask others who've taken those steps. You get a mentor, right? Mentor is huge. Because you could be trying to open a door, you don't have a key to that. And somebody else already has a key. Now they can see your work. You prove to them that you're ready. They'll hand you the key and put you in the door with a lot of people. So now who you say you are will present itself because nobody's going to put you in position. They can give you an opportunity, right? That's something to know because when you know this, all of this, you will stay, you will stay a believer because a lot of us in the field, we go through a lot of mental, mental problems right now. You know, as a physician, you know, you thinking that you have all the answers, but you go through a lot. Many years before you become, I have a constant, I have a thing I say about that we are becoming, you are becoming. Um, for me right now, I've graduated. Um, I took a, a hit while in medical school. I lost my father. Um, end of my third year. Well, not end of my third year, beginning of my third year. Um, end of 2016. And, you know, being on this journey as tough as it, it is already, having to now take take that emotional, you know, dip and challenge myself. I've been a strong person. Now I have to challenge myself. Now I have to see what I'm really made of, you know. Um, I went through a lot post that, but I kept going, you know. Um, I'm, I, didn't, I haven't failed any courses. Um, but unfortunately with my step two exam, during that time period I passed, but I took a dip on that. Um, my goal was to get into orthopedic surgery. Um, still a goal. Um, but I'm in a period right now where I applied for my first time in residency for that and I did not match. Things didn't go as well as I, things didn't go as I thought. My plan A didn't go, my plan B didn't go. Um, and definitely did not have a plan C. So just to talk about a little bit about this time period post that, that some of you guys may face. And if you don't face it, then you may face another challenge down the road. But if you do face this, Understand that is all part of the process. I, it took me some time to understand that. What I did was I took a step away from medicine. You know, around that period of March, I took a step away. I, I do a lot of things. I do entertainment. I dance. I do motivational speaking. I like having doing lectures. I just like to know that I'm more than just a doctor, right? So seeing that and growing all those other tentacles at that time period allowed me to get myself out of that clouded state and actually made me able to formulate a new plan about how I'm gonna attack um, um, the next go around. Um, also, I feel like it has humbled me a lot because you know, at one point I took the exam four times and I didn't get in. So now being met with, with a, 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 a foot stop quote unquote, which is really not, but sometimes it's, it's, it's a sign to just fall back a little bit and, and enjoy what you've done so far because there's still a lot more to do, but you just cannot rush yourself getting there. And that's the message right there. Nothing is rushed. If you need a year or two that tell you that you don't need, they want to see you consistently doing this, yeah, that's true. But if you need something for your mental state, um, for your life, you know, take the breaks that you need. So it's all different for all of us. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is for those that are very, very hungry to get in the field. It feels that way to you because all your peers 
or get somewhere, you know, and then if you if you one of those that are stuck somewhere and not moving, you can start seeing things in different ways. You need to understand this is an individual journey. When you go on a journey with a group of people, now you work with people. But during that time period away from people, you find yourself by yourself, trying to figure it out for yourself. Those that are in medicine, um, trying to you know, find their pathway to the various, various fields. Here are things that I feel are gems to know, you know, early preparation for these hurdles. Hurdles, I mean by the exams that you have to take. Early preparation is key. Um, I always try to advise people who know that their step one is coming in a year and a half from now or something like that. Not too early to start gathering materials that you have to use to annotate in those materials that you're gonna use to study because what you want to do is start conditioning yourself for that for that period of ultimate preparation because it's such a jam-packed period that the challenge is plenty but if you can start taking parts of the challenge and fit it in and stretching it out before the challenge before you meet the challenge you'll be ready for that because you already conditioned yourself example annotating your first aid or doing these Q-band questions way outside before you even have just to get yourself acquainted with the vision you know what the questions look like how fast you have to probably process the way you have to process um because we all know that when we panic and feel the anxiety our things are distorted you don't even know what you read again you know what i mean that's just like that's how life is you know when you get in a state of panic anxiety things start looking disfigured you're not reasoning it but when you're in shape when you're conditioned you can slow it down and things like that so that's important because a lot of people are intelligent but it's the mental fun is the mental aspect that we have to learn to train I, i'll keep saying that again how important mindset is um mindset is so that is one important gem two is if you have an idea of what you want to go into and you know the requirements you know that many places are pumping out research and things like that and you don't want to be one of those people who just didn't do enough. You might, in your heart, be a great person, but nobody cares about a great person. You understand? Know people care about qualifications and things like that. Who's going to get the job done? It's not a lot of emotions that go into medicine when you're in the field. But yet, when you meet a certain people in your department, you can be humans with them. But the process of getting people in, you just have to fit in these things. If your CV doesn't, to you, look like you would hire yourself then well, how you expect somebody else that probably have done so many research or know have seen so many other direct you know take you in so you have to do what you need to do these are the for those that are in medicine um and on top of that also networking um going to conferences right conferences can be used as a leisure right you don't have to go there to study you just go there to meet people and things like that dress well take your card go over there see what's going on in the medical community right because there's there's book stuff there's treatment but then there's also social life when it comes to medicine people that are engaging themselves talking about what they're seeing their experiences share your experiences with others as well so that you can see what's going on and if you, you know that you're within a network of the medical family and that also allows you to be good with your mental health, you know, because you're sharing the stories with many people, going to conferences, seeing opportunities, seeing the newest update. Because if you're by yourself, you may not see everything. So that's also important. And then through that, somebody can meet you. You never know. Like that person could be somebody interviewing you or know somebody who's interviewing you and things like that. So you, you, you make your presence felt in medicine. Um, and it's, it's all part of laws of attraction. If you want something, you gotta be around it, you gotta meditate on it, you gotta, they gotta feel you, um, and things like that. So that's just one advice, um, or a gem, you know, for those that's on, that, 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 that's in the field. Currently, right now, for me, I'm still pushing with my initial goals. Um, I like, I have to tell myself that, you know, I'm big, this guy has called me to do something. Right, and if I'm not a surgeon, it's not the end all, you know. Um, but the, the the most important thing for me in this time period was to understand my overall journey as a person, 
what it is I want them, want out of my life and things like that. And how medicine is going to help me fulfill all of that. And that has allowed me to, you know, generate some Plan Bs. Um, I wouldn't really call them Plan Bs, really, because um, they're a good solid Plan As. Um, but it's just another way to stay within and stay make sure that I have something going on for myself. So this time around, I'm going forward, applying. I'm, 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 I'm interested in, in, the, in a couple of other things um, that if those are the steps to get to where I want to go, that's the best step to get there. Um, and, you know, that's what is, that's also important. You know, I'm, I'm a big advocate that if you know what you want to do, you stay focused on that and don't even think about any other options. Right, and that's the great mindset to have. But also, because of the way the field is, also prepare for the worst, so that you're prepared for it. And that's just how you have to treat life. You know, um, stay prepared, stay on your toes as much as possible. Um, I, I think that sums it up for today on what I have to share. Um, but uh, medicine is such a wonderful uh, field. It has changed me. Um, for the better, um, yeah, I don't. I don't think that I will be the person I am today if I have not gone through this challenge. Currently, the things that I'm doing, I'm working on a book right now. Um, I have a mentorship page and things like that. Doctor's Message is my is my brand. Um, I'm, I try to. I'm a motivational speaker. Um, I guess I will say that, but. You know, I just do a lot of my stuff over the social media. I would like to do, you know, stage talks and things like that, go to conference. That's how, that's the kind of vision that I have. But the question now is, I don't want to step too, I don't want to spread myself too thin. I want it to all happen at the right time. Um, you know, and I also do a very involved with my culture, which keeps me happy. I'm known for my culture dances and things like that. And recently being able to in this period of not being in residency uh, while still doing other uh, clinical stuff, I've had time to launch a class for that. Um, and the positives of the class it still has, you know, a medicine minor component because cardiovascular health, my goal with that is to talk about diabetes in the culture and things like that as it, as it expands. Um, but now I'll see how I'm able to use my talent to still stay within medicine. Um, concept. Um, so these things have kept me uplifted. Um, it has keep, kept me in focus. Uh, I'm not remaining sluggish. One of the most important things, don't be sluggish. You know, especially if you don't get in somewhere, don't be mad at the world. Don't fall in. Don't break up with somebody at the time. Don't start dissociating yourself with friends. They're not the cause of that. You know, these people are not the cause of that. You just have to take time for yourself figure out your next plan, and if you're happy, find a way to be happy, right? Um, but the period has definitely alarmed, you know, raised up alarm in me. Just know that life is really what you, life is given to you, but it's really what you squeeze out of it, you understand? So just like all of us, you can go and get some orange. You know, some of us will squeeze it all the way in the pulp, some people just squeeze it just for the juice, you understand? And some people will just decide to eat the whole thing without even squeezing it. The question is just how bad do you want it? Um, so I'm gonna leave you guys with that um, and just let you know that success is all in your routine. Thank you very much. If you wanna follow me, I have, well, whichever one you wanna follow, but my, I have, uh, it's doctor's message um, and then my other page doctor underscore OMM underscore MD which is my more social and social page if you want to follow my uh, culture dance class it's Ogene and Suya the medical school is very tough financially you're broke and things like that you already pay for application you travel for interviews and things like that I was definitely struggling I only had like I had five dollars in my account you know and I was going to say man listen I can't, I, I, I need to be doing something. Um, and I was like, you know what? Let me start using my talent. Let me teach classes. Um, I know it's going to be some investment getting the student, but, you know, it's something. It's, it'll be growing. 
Um, so that creativity came out of being broke. Um, but I'm very happy of how it has turned out. I've taught four classes so far, um, and every single class has been amazing. Um, at least having 10, 10, 10 plus people, which is pretty good, you know, and it will keep on growing. So, but yeah, that's it for you, for me, for me, and thank you for having me.